So this is a continuation of what I started on the previous video with the heating curve of water. I want to talk a little bit more about um, the plateaus themselves, and then we're going to work a couple of practice problems so we can see how you're going to use this. So again, heating curve of water, um, heat of fusion, heat of vaporization is where the plateaus are, and you need those. Um, it's going to be kilojoules per mole. Um, so all you need to know is how much you have in order to do that. And I'll show you that in the calculation. And I did have a mistake on the previous one. This is a specific heat of steam uh, versus a specific heat of ice. So if you want to draw um, three boxes on the bottom here, and I'm going to take the heat of fusion, this plateau, and I'm going to label A, B, and C. So A and C are on the corners here, um, and then B is somewhere in the middle. So if we're at zero degrees Celsius and we have water, if we're going to draw a circle as our um, smallest thing, uh, if we have an, a solid, if you remember back to first year chemistry, we draw the circles all touching together, okay? And we would say that this solid has maybe one swishy um, associated with it. So realize that once I get um, further along here, I have some that's in the liquid phase and then some that's still in the solid phase. So I would show the little squiggly to say that that's a liquid and then some particles are still touching in the solid form. But realize that this kinetic energy is the same because I'm still at the same degree Celsius, okay? And then finally, once I get all the way to liquid, okay, I still have one swishy, okay? But now my potential energy is different because my distance between those particles is very different. So that's really what's changing at the plateaus is the potential energy rather than the kinetic energy. So as I heat up water, that's the easiest one to think about, it's still in the liquid phase. Some of it is going to the gas phase, but until I completely convert it all to gas, um, I have a change in temperature. But the de delta H of VAP or the delta H of fusion is where you are changing the phase. So you are ripping those forces apart. You're putting all of that energy into separating those particles. So that's why that's potential energy at those plateaus. And then the upward sloping is your kinetic energy change. So let's look at some calculations with this. Um, and usually these are pretty straightforward. You just need to see me work a couple of them. So how much heat is needed to take 10 grams of water from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 110? Uh, and so I have a specific heat of ice and steam. Um, you should know 4.18 um, for, uh, excuse me, these are in calories. My mistake. Heat of fusion, heat of vaporization, all, also in calories. And I kept it simple. I did it in grams. Typically, you see delta H in uh, moles, but this is just to speed up the process a little bit. So what I'd like you to do for these problems is to kind of draw a graph. So here I have zero degrees Celsius. I'm starting at negative 10, and I'm going all the way up to 110. So if I draw my graph, Okay, I will see that I have essentially five different parts of this curve, five different parts of this curve. So this should be a two there. So this is delta H fusion. This is delta H VAP. Okay, so what I could do is break this down into five separate steps and show you each one of those calculations. So again, each part of this curve, you're gonna do a different calculation. So if I'm going from negative 10 up to zero, I'm in the stage of solid. So I have to use the specific heat of um, ice. So I'm gonna take my 10 grams times my specific heat of ice and then realize it's always final minus initial when we're doing the delta T. So it comes out to be 47.8 calories. Then once I'm at zero degrees Celsius, I have to use heat of fusion. I have no change in temperature, so I can't use Q, okay? So I take my calories per gram at my heat of fusion, multiply it by the grams. Again, if you had this per mole, you just gotta convert things to moles. Again, this was just to speed up the process. So about 797 calories for that step. 
Then if I look at step three, I'm going and I'm now in the liquid phase, I'm going from zero up to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is your traditional Q question. Uh, 10 grams, remember one calorie is essentially our definition of a calorie is to take one gram of pure water, one degree Celsius, um, 100 to one. So I get about a thousand calories. Then step four up here, that's heat of vaporization. So I'm converting it all to vapor. So I'm gonna take the uh, 539.4 calories per gram, multiply it by 10, I get uh, 5394 calories. And then finally, I'm in the steam. Um, I'm now converted everything to vapor. So then I multiply it using the specific heat of vapor. So I get 48.2 calories. So I add it all up to get my total. So I convert it to kilocalories just because it's a big number, it's 7,000. So 7.287 approximately is how many calories of energy of heat that you need to put in to completely convert it. So realize that this is an endothermic process, so it's going to be a positive quantity. So again, when we're doing Q calculations, you could um, do your delta Ts whichever way you want, but just understand, am I putting energy in or am I taking energy out? So if I had you go from 110 down to negative 10, it would be exactly the same thing. I would just call it negative or say heat is being released or being removed from the system. So in this next problem, same kind of idea, okay? I have 300 grams of ice at negative 20 are placed in a container of warm water. Before all the ice is melted in the experiment, it is stopped by removing the remaining ice, which weighs about 25 grams. The temperature of the water at this point is five degrees Celsius. Calculate the energy lost by the warm water. So this is your specific heat of ice there. And again, I would always give you these constants. So see if you could try it. I'm gonna come back and show you the answer. So from negative 20 to zero, you would take the 300 grams times the specific, specific heat of ice uh, and the temperature change. And again, I'm gonna focus on negative or positive at the end. So I get 2,868 calories. Then at zero degrees Celsius, this is where it gets interesting. Because I took out 25 grams of ice, okay, not all of it completely converted. So that's why I'm taking the specific, excuse me, heat of fusion of ice times the 275, not the 300, uh, because not all of it was completely changed to um, liquid. So that's where I get 21,917.5 calories. And then Last step, I'm taking the liquid um, and changing it to five degrees Celsius. So I take 275 again, one calorie per gram degree Celsius, five degrees Celsius is 1375 calories. So if I add that all up, I get 26.2 kilocalories. Now, what did the question ask for? It said the energy lost by the warm water. So what you have to be careful about, like we've seen before is, this has to be a negative number because energy is being lost by the warm water. So it's um, focusing again on um, heat transfer, okay? And just be aware of, again, are you talking positive or negative when you're doing these types of calculations?